talking about computing anamorphism rings and the Riemann matrices. Mm -hmm. Oh, very much. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it's a real pleasure to, to be here first. Um, and thank you for giving me a chance to speak about my work. So this joint work with, um, with Sumit Tagorai. So first, um, I will introduce what is a dream cloud module and give some motivation how to think about these objects, and then uh, I will give the main results, and if there is time, I will talk about the proofs. So um, everything will be happening over function fields, but it's uh, convenient to have this, um, to keep in mind that essentially, uh, there is a very close similarity between integers and polynomials with coefficients in a finite field. And then the analog of Q uh, is in this field. Huh? And then on A, there is a uh, absolute value. So this is also on F. And this is Q to the degree of uh, in P of A. And um, you can complete this field with respect to this absolute value. And you get uh, this field, which is, uh, this is isomorphic to. So this is the completion at, um, at the place in the place of f that corresponds to the absolute value is that, so this is r, and then there is also a version of c, which is, so you, you take the algebraic closure and then complete. So unlike um, here, where the degree is 2, these are the infinite extension. And then, um, given an A field, by which I mean a field that comes with a homomorphism from A, so this has positive characteristic, there is this interesting ring that I will denote like this, which consists of all polynomials of this form, and I will convert to some end. So the coefficients are in Q. So these are FQ linear polynomials. Um, you can add them in the usual way. But if you multiply them in, in the usual way, you don't get the ring. But what you can do is that you can define multiplication as a substitution. And then because um, these are Q powers, easy to check that you again get um, a polynomial of this sort, but this multiplication is not commuted. So this is a ring. All right. Um, so then, um, now I will say what is a dream cloud module, and then explain how to think about it in analogy with elliptic curves or the um, usual multiplicative group. So dream cloud module is simply a homomorphism from A to this uh, ring, which can be uniquely defined by the unibial of P because it is generated by P as an algebra. So you have to send this to um, something like this. And these GIs are okay. So you can choose them anything you want, but this first coefficient should be the image of T. So this is kind of a condition on the derivative. So if you take 
take the derivative of this polynomial, you get uh, this gamma t. All right. So then, um, why is it called the Dreyfus module? This R is the rank. So where is the module? Well, the module comes from um, the fact that now you can, besides this A structure, there is a, a new structure which comes from this homomorphism where A acts on uh, an element by uh, like this. So this, this will be this polynomial and then the image of A will be this polynomial. And you simply substitute B into the polynomial. Is okay? This part. What's happening? So I will give an example. Um, so the simplest um, trivial module is, is this module that was actually introduced by Carlos. So here you take, and then you can. Compute something like this. So what, what is this? This is p p x plus x q plus p x plus x q q. So you can expand and you get this polynomial, and then p squared will act on g by simply you substitute it into this polynomial, and this gives you an action. So then uh, there are torsion points, these are the roots of some of these P8, right? So under this action you don't you don't have any torsion points, but here you get uh, torsion points, and now uh, I this here. to sort of show you, convince you that this gives you a theory that is very similar. To maybe look the case, there is a second way of defining these objects, and here you have to talk about lattices. A lattice that is lambda is free, A module of rank R. And you also insist that it is discrete, which means that if you take a ball in C infinity, there are only finitely many elements of lambda in the ball, or in the radius. And then um, to such an object, you can associate. Sorry? C infinity is that. Uh, oh, yeah. This is this. And on the board below, what is K? K is an arbitrary field. Okay. So in this case, K will be seen. K is any field that comes with a homomorphism from A. Yeah, if there is a homomorphism, then uh, the characteristic is positive. Yeah. Yeah, so this, this, this contains a Another question. K is allowed to be So, that's true. Sometimes it can be convenient. But generally, it's not. It's not convenient. Alright, so then the exponential is uh, defined. This and this turns out to be an entire function. And you have these properties that exponential lambda x plus y. This is additive. And 
and it is also also uh, a few big years. And then there is this other property that is important. So if you take any element of K, you can show that there is a trickled module so that you get this relation. So if you act here by A in the usual way, so A so here gamma is just embedding in this field. So this is like a, not, not difficult to show, it's like an exercise. All right, so you, you get a drink cloud module out of such a lattice, and then uh, drink cloud and um, drink cloud proof that there is a bijection between lattices. So now, what are what about similarity to um, the usual exponential? So I claim that this this is like an analog of the exponential function, and for that you should think about the exponential as giving you this exact statement. And then uh, you can act here by n. So then this c is an additive proof. But if you act by the exponential, the group structure, well, it, it's a different group. Now you are kind of uh, raising trans power. Okay, so if you write the same diagram like this, you will get so you have this old structure of an A module where you multiply, but if you add by this exponential the module structure changes to this EA. Okay, so then um, essentially the roots of these polynomials are similar to roots of unity. And right? so this So from this you can see that this is isomorphic. So it's a free A mod A module of my bar. Okay. All right. Some some example. One interesting example of this. This is the first paper. So Carlitz was interested in this module as I said, so C T in Px plus XQ, and he explicitly, very explicitly computed that the exponential of, of this module is this series. Right? 
and the, the kernel um, is given, it, it has rank one, but this pi c is some analog of the usual pi, and it is transcendental. Yeah. Is the last factor of the denominator correct? This minus one. Is that at the correct place? Or should it be n minus one? N minus one. All right, so from this you can uh, easily check directly that this is the highest and this is transcendental. But then you can also show that if you adjoin to f uh, the torsion point of the Pellet's module, so this is Galois of f, and this Galois group is actually as more The group of units of thing model. So, like, um, okay, so this is this is kind of similar. To this fact, just to emphasize that it's kind of the analog of the exponential, but it, it can have larger rank. And no. sorry, no. A is arbitrary. Uh, a is in A. So you you iterate this polynomial. Like if you want to compute, I don't know, t squared plus t plus one. So you iterate, you will get some polynomial. You compute its roots. It has an A module structure. And then the, this extension that you get by splitting that polynomial will have this Galois, which are the roots of unity. So then uh, there is one extra fact is that you can prove a reciprocity law here. Uh, if you take uh, a prime, prime ideal in A, um, so this splits um, splits, in, splits completely in uh, this step CA if and only if is congruent to one order. And here I'm um, uh, using the following notation. So this is a prime ideal, but you can choose a monic generator. So it's some irreducible monic polynomial, uniquely determined by the ideal. And then the ideal splits completely if and only if uh, p mod a is one. So this is this is the usual cyclotomic reciprocity. Peace. Peace. Right, just for fun, you can uh, do the following exercise. If you take this is an example, so suppose you want to consider this um, field. So this is the splitting field of x t plus x. Um, 
minus 1. And then, um, so you can check that x q minus 1 plus t mod p as q minus 1 distinct groups, meaning that if you consider this polynomial in the field AP, right, so there's a field, this polynomial will split completely, right, it's kind of what P splits completely means, um, if and only um, P is 0 is 1, so the constant term is 1. So you can interesting exercise to do directly. Um, all right, so then the question is, uh, what happens with these fields uh, more generally? So the, <coughs> the reciprocity laws, of course, are central in number theory. You would like to understand, for example, for number fields, the set of primes that split completely because it uniquely characterizes the number field, right? If you know which primes split completely. So, um, and generally, it's, I mean, it's a wide open problem, but for some number fields, especially those that come from, for example, uh, cyclotomics and then uh, elliptic curves, and in some cases, for billion varieties, by joining torsion points of billion varieties, uh, a reciprocity no, uh, law can be deduced. Uh, but it's not, I mean, beyond elliptic curves, the, the results are kind of sparse. So I want to explain that you can do this type of reciprocity law, the Kylitz type, in arbitrary rank. And how, how this extends to arbitrary rank. Um, the difficulty is, is, of course, in the fact that once the rank is larger than 1, The collection of this will be some given by some GL, GLR, so it's not um, a billion. A lot of is generally not a billion. All right, and what I'm going to say is, um, in, in some sense, motivated by the work of Duke and Toss for elliptic curves, but the difference will be that you can do something like they do for elliptic curves in arbitrary mind. All right, so uh, is the vague version of the theorem. You start uh, at P, the potential module over F, meaning that this field K that was in the definition is F, and K embeds into F and it is away, so this will be fixed. Uh, our rank one larger. Uh, so assume says the characteristic of F does not divide R. So this is a technical condition, you can remove it, but let me state this theorem assuming this, it's, it's easier to do. And then um, for each Reduction is some 
while technical conditions um, all but finitely many primes uh, satisfy this condition. Um, there are uh, two um, effectively computable. Elements um, A, T, and B, T. A says that, oh, sorry, <laughs> I think it's all squished. All right, the punchline. So such that uh, P with completely A it can only um, this A P is conquering to R all day. And it's not the same A of course. And then uh, this BP zero more. Alright, so what are these constants that I will explain? I will try to explain in the remainder of this talk and how they are related to endomorphism rings. But let me give you an example. So the main thing is that these constants, they do not depend on n. So if you have p, right, you compute these elements, and then you can vary this n any way you want. And you can see how this... You essentially, uh, there is a stronger statement that allows you to say how p splits in all these division fields, so you, you can vary n. And from a certain data that you compute for specific P, you can tell how it splits. So that's sort of this is not the element. So here's an example. Uh, so you take Q to be Y, P, X, X, so then every prime is a prime of good reduction. Essentially, good reduction means that you can reduce this model of P. Uh, so P shouldn't be in the denominators of these coefficients. And you also should get a Dreamfeld module of the same prime. So the leading term shouldn't be divisible by P. So you can immediately see that there are finitely many of those, if there are any. And then you take this P to be this polynomial. So I will leave it to you to check that this is actually reducible. <laughs> F5T. This is, of course, done by on the computer. Uh, but um, it is computable that A is this three is spread, and then B T is T minus one. So this means that um, P splits completely. Uh, we can only 
n is e minus one. So, so this is the only division field where this will split completely, but generally you can determine the splitting. All right, so what are those uh, APs and BPs? Now I will, um, so maybe I should just explain vaguely what the idea is. So the splitting of the prime is of course determined by the behavior of the protein. And so for each prime, there is a specific element in the Galois group called the Frobenius. And uh, the prime will split completely if and only if the Frobenius is, is the identity. So then you want to determine, um, you, you have this action of the Galois group. And so this acts on this and so you get a map from this into GLR of A mod N. So you, to Frobenius, there is an associated matrix. So then the matrix will be the identity if it's, well, one of the necessary conditions is that the trace is congruent to R. So this is A, this A is basically the trace of the Frobenius, which can be detected with computer. But then the problem with matrices that uh, have size larger than one is that, well, if you have a, say, two by two matrix, you can have matrix like this, which has the same trace as the identity, but it's not the identity. So the whole issue is, what are those other entries? How do you control them? Then that's where the BP comes. It turns out that Generally, for any rank, uh, if this BP is divisible by P, then the matrix modulo uh, N becomes, uh, becomes the identity. So this, this all other entries die out. All right, but where does BP come from? Uh, and this count, uh, this is a, uh, this is something that now I need to talk about endomorphism rings of Winkel modules, and this is where the, uh, this Duke Toss paper comes, comes in, which, which was the motivation for doing this. So, uh, endomorphism ring of this uh, the given printout module will be the elements in this x that commute with with now you, this looks weird uh, the way you should think about this again is that um, you have this this twisted a structure on k Right? So what is a what is a homomorphism or endomorphism of, of modules? Well, you want u p to be p u, right? So you want this to commute for any a. So this is where this condition comes from. It's enough to check it for T, because again, A is generated by T. Sorry. You mean does it work for general uh, A, not A? 
So for, for now, it's just for FQT. But um, you, you could generalize this in principle, but it's not done. Yeah. Yeah, there are some parts that are specific to the situation that we're considering, but they are not essential. Um, so uh, I will I will say where it is used over P1. All right. So uh, the, what is the theory of these endomorphism rings is uh, fairly well understood, at least in, in many situations. In particular, if you are um, if you are working over so over yeah, P, so this is A of P. So let, let's fix some prime and consider this field as the A field. So here the gamma is just the quotient. Then um, the endomorphism ring. This is a uh, is an A order in imaginary I will say what this means imaginary extension of F of degree R. And imaginary means um, Infinity does not split. Well, there is a unique place okay. Okay, so you, you take F and then there is some extension L uh, of degree R. Um, oh, this is a bit more. Order such an extension, um, and this this uses the fact that we're over this field. If you are in a, over a higher degree extension of this FP, then the endomorphism ring actually can be a non-commutative like in, in the quaternion algebra. This is, this is like the super singular elliptic curve, right? Uh, the endomorphism ring. Of a super singular elliptic curve, if you take large enough extension, would be quaternion algebra, but over FP, it is actually an imaginary quadratic order. That's, that's, this is one place where it's used, but I mean, you can adjust some of this. And there is a special element, phi, which is this x. Right, so this element, um, it is in the center, the center of Fx. just because it fixes the coefficient. Right, if you raise the coefficient to this power, this p, remember that this p is the order. Is how it was defined. So this is in the center. So then you get that this A, well, EA, the infinity of A in this twisted polynomial ring with pi, is inside of this E. Then this is a suborder. So then, um, Because they are both, both are free A models. So then, by the structure theorem, you can say that this is A1, A. Or on this one, where this B 
these are some elements that are uniquely determined by this divisibility condition. All right, so then uh, all right, so then let me um, in the remaining ten minutes let me explain how what what is the actual term that we prove. Well, so this B that was in the first theorem, this BP, is this B1. Okay, it will turn out that this is this B1. And so this is the theorem. Kind of a technical statement. So there is a, for each. So there is, <laughs> it doesn't seem like what, what's going on. Um, so it's a statement about, really about the action of the Frobenius. But the way you should think about this is that generally the Frobenius, the characteristic polynomial, it's some matrix, right? Generally the minimal polynomial of that um, element will have degree R because it's a matrix, so R by R. Now, in some cases, um, the, the minimal polynomial will have smaller degree. And the smaller degree happens when you are considering essentially this, um, this element, bi. Okay, so, um, So just for B1, and so what does B1 say? So uh, meaning of B1. So it says that um, there is a, this B1 is the largest element such that if your pi acting on this um, PM, so this is what it's called. Um, so this pi acts as a scalar on PM, uh, if and only if. So let, let me explain how this follows from this. 
So suppose uh, pi acts as a scale, right? So then it means that the minimal polynomial is of degree one. So there is this um, polynomial such that pi substituted into it is equal to some b times this uh, something in the endomorphism. So it acts as a scalar. But then you know that this uh, b has to divide with b1. So this is exactly the statement that pi acts as a scalar if and only if n divides b1. The, so this theorem is, is stronger than just this reciprocity theorem because what you can deduce is an um, arithmetic meaning for all bi's, not just for b1, but for all bi's. Now, if you know this fact, right, how do you then get the reciprocity theorem? Well, now it's kind of a easy deduction. So pi is one. Again, that's it. Again, you can only pi acts as a scalar. Scalar C and M, and we see. Uh, right. So. So that uh, it's a scalar, and then the trace should be R. Uh, right, so then this CR should be common to R, and then you can remove Yeah, so then um, right, so this AR, so this AP was the trace, and this should be uh, one and more. What is the statement? Yeah, so this should be, uh, yeah, so this should be or more. Right, so. Um, Yeah, so this C is 1 if and only, okay, <laughs> this C should be 1. So pi acts as, as 1 on this, if pi acts as a scalar, and this C is 1. C is 1. And then the trace, how can you see that C is 1? You compute the trace, it's A of AP, and then uh, on the other hand, it is CR. And then you can see that C is 1 if and only if this A or AP is congruent to R modulo N. And here I'm using that R is co prime to the characteristic of the field. Because then you can cancel. Alright, so from this you get that. Uh, We get the, the serum that I stated at the beginning. All right, so um, just as a, just to conclude, one one more remark. I don't have time to to talk about the actual computations, but computing this AP is relatively easy. Computing the endomorphism ring is not is not easy 
but you can turn this reciprocity theorem backwards. Okay, so you can first check if what, what's happening with, with certain primes to get all these DPs and to compute the endomorphism. So then uh, is a, the, the reciprocity theorem. So you have to do V1, V2, V1, VR minus 1, VR minus 2. Then there are some more complicated entries there, and there is 0. But the point is that when the V1, so this is below the main diagonal. Then the point is that when uh, these entries compli are complicated, when when p divides v one, right? So everything vanishes, and you get the scale of this. You you can compute from from this theory also the, the actual matrix of the Frobenius, which I was telling you that you can compute how the prime splits. Well, if you know the Frobenius, you can. Uh, compute its uh, its origin, then you know how to right, well, Thank you very much. Very nice talk. Thanks for answering a few questions.